So the algebraic solution, yes, to the energy tut booklet tutorial question two. So that's what this is about. And the whole question is about finding the work done. Um, so we need to find the torque and the angle theta. So we substitute in formulae that we know. I know that the angle theta is 2 pi times the number of turns. So instead of theta in this formula, I can write the work done is T times 2 pi N. So what I'm doing here is trying to use the colour to demonstrate, you know, I'm substituting in. Instead of theta, I'm putting in 2 pi N. The torque is the total torque. And that is the applied torque plus the friction torque. So I can substitute that in instead of the torque. The work done equals the applied torque plus the friction torque times 2 pi n. So I'm gradually building up a function for the work done on this slide here. The applied torque from the formulae is so the applied torque is the moment of inertia times alpha, which is the angular acceleration. So I can put that in instead of the applied torque. So the work done equals I alpha plus the friction torque times 2 pi n. So the moment of inertia I equals mk squared, so I can substitute that in instead of the i in this function. And gradually we're building it up. And so it then includes variables that we know. What we have to do next is to think about the alpha, which is the angular acceleration. What formula will give us the angular acceleration? So we know alpha is omega 2 squared, which is the final in angular velocity minus the omega 1 squared over 2 theta. So carrying on and substituting that in, we get that the work done equals mk squared times this lot. So I need to put that in a bracket, omega 2 squared minus omega 1 squared over 2 theta plus 2 plus the applied torque times 2 pi n. So now we have that omega equals 2 pi f, but, and therefore omega squared equals 4 pi squared f squared, and I want that because we've got omega squared in here. Okay? So now I can substitute that in, but the 4 pi squared is going to be common to both, so I can take that outside the bracket. So jumping a step, and you can have a look and see if you can see how this works. The work term done equals m a squared, and then we've got times 2 pi, whoops, not 2 pi, 4 pi squared, open bracket, f 2 squared minus f 1 squared over 2 theta plus 2 pi plus um, plus to t f the frictional torque times 2 pi n So now substituting in 2 pi n instead of theta, we get this, where we get 4 pi n on the bottom. I can do a bit of cancelling now. The 4s cancel here. And the, one of those pi's cancels one of these pi's. So that 
simplifies it slightly. Yeah, it's still complex, but we end up with this function. Work done equals mk squared times pi f2 squared minus f1 squared over n plus the friction torque times 2 pi n. I'm not suggesting you do this in the exam, but mass is important in engineering. And if I want to, to plot a function of the work done, then I need to come up with something like this that I can plug into autograph. And I've done that. If I go to autograph, this function here is exactly what I've just been, I've just written down. And the curve looks like this. So if I go back to here, that's the function. So this is the function here that I put in. It, uh, what I've done, if I actually write this function out, is I've written it slightly differently. I've put the 2 pi n first, which is common, mk squared, and then I've opened the bracket and put um, pi times x squared minus u squared. So I've used u for the initial velocity and x for the variable. So what I'm actually plotting here is x. And then I've divided that by n, which is what we um, had. And then I've added t, which stands for the friction torque. So I've used symbols in autograph to represent each of these things. n represents the number of revolutions, m the mass, k the radius of gyration, u the initial velocity, x the final velocity. So I'm plotting the work done, which represents y, against x, and I've added this constant, which is the friction torque. So if we go back to autograph, that's this function. And if you bring down the constant controller, we can change the values for any of the values we put in. So if I wanted the mass, 125, which is what we were given. What's the uh, radius of gyration? 0.15, which is what I was given, and so on. So I get the values to be what they need to be. And then, if I want to know what the um, work done is when the angular velocity was 20, which I think is what it turned out to be, something like that, was it? Have we got the notes from last week? So if we've got 31, uh, uh, 136 for our angular velocity, okay, then what I do is... Uh, Oh, sorry, sorry, that's wrong, isn't it? When we put this in, if you remember back to the four, we, we um, change that to the frequency. This represents the frequency. And so what was the frequency in hertz? So if we go to a frequency of 20, or just over 20, and look up and across, we'll see we've got a work rate of around about 30,000 which is what we calculated it to be. But we now have a function that we can explore. And that's what an engineer will, will want. An engineer will be really interested in this. This is a model. We're modeling the work done against the final frequency, if you think about it. Okay? If I change this number and make one of these others x, I can see how does the work rate change with the radius of gyration? How does the work vary with the mass of the flywheel? And so on. And so, algebraically, there is real value in coming up with a function that describes the situation we're interested in, rather than just keying in the numbers and doing a one-off calculation.